This is a high-speed phantom camera that films at 250,000 frames per second, so you can get awesome shots like this. Now, as you can see there, you can see the bullet clearly. You can see it expand when it hits the target clearly. Everything is crystal clear. Now, this is completely expected from this kind of camera. It's very high-end for this purpose. But what about an everyday iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy? Can it actually capture a bullet midair? Something everyone's been asking. Those little streaks and specks you can see in the Charlie Kirk videos, are those actually bullets? Or are they just artifacts or camera weirdness? Today we're doing what reporters, engineers, and bored internet nerds do best, testing the physics and the phones. I'll show you the math, the tech, and the realistic odds for air guns, handguns, and rifles at 30, 60, 120, and 240 frames per second. Spoiler, it's possible, but mostly with caveats. If you are seeing a tiny dot or streak in phone footage during shooting, it changes how we interpret what happened. But video sensors, frame rates, and bullet speeds make a difference, a huge one. Modern iPhones do support high frame rates. Many models can record slow motion in 1080p up to 240 frames per second. And newer Pro models can do 4K at 120 frames per second. All right, so now some quick nerd math. Imagine the bullet crosses a visible swath of your image. Call that W meters. Bullet speed is V, or meters per second. Time it spins in view is T equals W divided by V. Your phone samples that time at F frames per second. If the result is less than one, it's unlikely you'll see it at all. If the result is greater than one, you'll probably see it on multiple frames. We'll use that to give real odds. First, low energy projectiles. A lot of air guns and pellets run at roughly 500 feet per second, approximately 152 meters per second. Some hobby guns go much faster, some slower. Let's pick a realistic visible path, W equaling 0.5 meters. That gives T equal to approximately 0.5 divided by 152, which is 0.0033S, about 3.3 milliseconds. Multiply that by the frame rate. At 30 frames per second, the chance of catching a single bullet on there is about 9% very unlikely. 60 frames per second, it's about 18%. 120 frames, it goes up to 33, and 240 frames per second goes all the way up to 55%. Meaning, with a 500 feet per second pellet and a half meter visible path, 240 frames per second slow-mo on a phone gives you a decent chance to see the pellet at least once, and a non-trivial chance it shows on multiple frames. But remember, a pellet on multiple frames might still be blurry or defocused unless the exposure per frame is short or you're in broad daylight. Now, let's talk about handguns. A common 9 by 19 millimeter load leaves the muzzle at around 1150 to 1200 feet per second, or 350 to 370 meters per second. Using the same visible path, W equal to 0.5 meters, T approximately 0.5 divided by 350 gives you 0.00143, or approximately 1.4 milliseconds. Now, if we multiply that by the frame rates, at 30 frames per second, that's about a 4% chance of capturing that bullet in the image. Now, again, this could be a streak, it could be a blob, it could be blurry. At 60 frames per second, approximately 9%. 120 frames per second, 16 to 17%. And 240 frames per second, approximately 34%. So even at 240 frames per second, a perpendicular handgun round crossing a half meter of frame is only about one in three chance of appearing in at least one frame, and the chance of multiple frames of smaller single digits at 120 frames per second, low double digits at 240 frames per second. That matches real world experience. You'll often get a tiny fuzzy dot or streak rather than a crisp bullet. Now, I'm not sure if everyone saw this back when it happened, but this is when President Trump had his assassination attempt in Pennsylvania, Butler, Pennsylvania. And here you can see, here's Trump. And then as you scroll over, this image was caught, and this is the streaking bullet. Now, this is a single bullet flying past him, but because of the speed of it and the shutter and the lighting and everything else that happened, the frames per second, it was caught as a blur or a smear across the screen. Some say it's fake, but some say that this is legit. This is an actual image of the bullet flying past his head as caught by a regular camera. All right, so now let's talk about rifles much faster. A typical 5.56 NATO muzzle velocity is often in the 2,700 to 3,000 feet per second range, roughly 820 to 925 meters per second, depending on load. 
Using the same W equals 1.0 meters, rifle bullets tend to be seen over longer pass if the camera distance is greater, and T is approximately 1 over 900, we get approximately 1.11 milliseconds. So if we multiply that by the frame rate, that gives us 30 frames per second, near zero chance. You're basically never going to see it. 120 frames per second, that's a 13% chance. But now if you go back to 60 frames per second, you're somewhere between zero and 13%. So an average iPhone or Samsung is probably going to be at that 30. You're typically not going to ever see it. But if you go to 60, you have a slightly higher chance, maybe 5 to 6%. And 120 frames per second, you're at 13%. 240 frames per second, you're looking at 27% chance that you would catch a rifle bullet on video with your phone. 240 frames per second for rifles often still show only a streak. You'd need hundreds to thousands of frames per second for crisp multi-frame captures. So again, you're going to see a blob, a blur, a streak, something that looks like an artifact, not a crisp, yes, 100%, this is a bullet. You would need a specialty phantom or some other kind of camera for that. Phones don't have mechanical shutters. They scan lines of sensor sequentially. That rolling shutter can stretch, skew, or create weird shapes when something moves faster than the sensor readout. Now, Apple's phones are faster, and they mitigate rolling shutter well, but very tiny, very fast objects can still be distorted into odd streaks. Wired documented how rolling shutter can turn fast motion into bizarre slow-mo artifacts. Combine rolling shutter plus short exposure plus compression plus video auto processing and you get small dots, streaks, or ghosting that look like projectiles but might be image artifacts, debris, or camera noise, especially when the object is only a few pixels across. So the key takeaways from the Charlie Kirk videos or any fun footage of a shooting. With air gun speed projectiles approximately 500 feet per second, it's very plausible to see on multiple phone slow-mo frames, 120 to 240 frames per second, if the pellet crosses a decent visible distance or is coming towards the camera. For handguns, approximately 1150 feet per second, it is possible to catch at 120 to 240 frames per second, but the odds are modest. Expect fuzzy, or a dot, not a crisp textbook bullet, or even a blur. And then rifles, at 2,700 to 3,000 feet per second, it is much harder. At phone frame rates, you'll usually only get a blur or nothing. Rare single frames are possible. Multi-frame crisp captures are unlikely without lab gear. And angle matters. Around traveling mostly towards or away from the lens spends more time in the frame, raising the odds significantly. Bright daylight shortens per frame exposure and increases clarity. Night or indoor footage reduces the odds. So don't jump to conclusions. A tiny speck might be camera noise, debris, an insect, reflection, or artifact from the rolling shutter. Conversely, seeing a dot doesn't prove a slower weapon was used. It just means the physics and the sampling line up. Always pair video analysis with forensics, witness statements, and shots on scene evidence. So again, is it possible? Yes, the chances are single digit in most cases, but you can also get up to 14 to 33% with rifles, depending on the angle that is captured at. And that would have to be at 240 frames per second, which most people don't typically film at that rate. And like Jason Goodman says in his videos, it's most likely that 240 frames per second that he's estimating for the videos and shots that he has shown, that it's probably for reconnaissance. Because no one is standing out there filming during the day at 240 frames per second in slow motion. Could iPhones capture the projectiles visible in those viral clips? Yes, sometimes. Especially for slower projectiles or perfect geometry and bright light, which it was daytime. But most of the time, especially with rifles and perpendicular handgun shots, what you'll get is a tiny blurred dot, a streak like President Trump's image, or nothing at all. And if you found this useful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this around. And also check out the affiliate links in the merch down below. It helps support the channel. I'll see you on the next one.